Maybe you are a hero of the Alliance who likes to slash spit on those disgusting horde losers in Warsong Gulch. Or maybe you are a skilled rogue who wants nothing more than to outplay the ratty noobs of Dalaran sewers. Or maybe you are just really lonely and have no friends. <clears throat> Well, no matter who you are, we got a video for you solo PvP enthusiasts. Today, we will tell you what the best classes are for duels, BGs, and open world PvP. Before we start, we have a question for you. Are you excited about Wrath of the Lich King? Maybe you are eager to relive the past or even have a completely new PvP experience. You're in luck because we've been working behind the scenes with some of the best Wrath of the Lich King players for our brand new classic website. That's right, Skill Capped WoW now includes Wrath of the Lich King and Retail, all under the same monthly subscription. We've already got you covered with class courses that fast track your learning experience, as well as over a hundred commentaries with hundreds more coming in the following weeks. These site exclusive guides teach you the ins and outs of your class and all the secrets you wish you had known sooner. Our courses are designed to get you ahead of the competition before the game is even released and with a rating game guarantee you have nothing to lose. Take advantage of our pre-launch offer and get access to retail and classic guides using the discount link below. Anyway, back to the video. So let's start by going over the criteria of how we will be doing our rankings. Each class will be given a score out of 5 for duels, BGs, and world PvP. For duels, we will assume that every cooldown will be available for both players and there might be line of sight involved. BGs should be self-explanatory and we're under the assumption that both teams will have a mix of random classes and skill levels with each team presumably having a healer or two. Our main focus will be on the maps with 10 or 15 players. As for world PvP, we will assume that cooldowns might not be available and might even include 1v2 or even 1v3 situations at times. We will start things off with DKs since they play a super important role in the Wrath of the Lich King solo meta. We're confident in saying that DK is the best overall dueling class since they are super well equipped for 1v1 situations. Death Knights are one of the few classes with multiple cooldowns with powerful offensive tools like Gargoyle and generalized defensive tech with AMS, Icebound Fortitude, and Self Healing. This makes DKs an execution test in any dueling setting as they can gradually rotate through their multiple defensive options while challenging virtually every class with their offensive power. They have favorable matchups against every other class in 1v1s with the exception of Rogue who will be their toughest fight in the early stages of the expansion. Nonetheless, they are the gold standard for 1v1 and we are giving them a total score of 5 for dueling. But it doesn't stop there, as DKs are one of the few melee classes that are super well rounded in random battlegrounds. Here, mechanics like Death Grip become infinitely more valuable for controlling teamfights, while AMZ becomes much stronger when used to negate high AoE damage. Not to mention, DKs are able to do considerable AoE damage of their own thanks to Pestilence spreading diseases. Above all though, DKs offer two strong zoning options with both Chains of Ice and Desecration, making them one of the best specs for keeping players in and out of skirmishes. Again, DKs will score a 5 in the BG category. World PvP is the only place where DKs might struggle. Since they are so cooldown centric, it is never guaranteed that they will have CDs ready for surprise attacks. And without any reliable way to manage multiple enemy players, DKs might actually face issues in open world PvP where we give them a 3.5 to round out their score. Next up, we have Druid, where both Feral and Balance take turns as the preferred spec. Feral is a contender for one of the best melee dueling specs. In most cases, they rely heavily on a hit and run play style, stunning enemy players, building combo points for bleeds or savage roar, and then kiting away using instant cyclones or entangling roots thanks to predatory strikes. They need to play like this because they are relatively squishy in cat form and generally don't fare well going toe to toe with enemy melee. Their goal is to eventually reset the fight enough to apply all of their bleeds and overwhelm the enemy player in an unbreakable stun. Although they might have one of the highest skill caps in the game, we give them a score of 4 for duels assuming they know what they're doing. In BG's, Balanced Druid takes our pick as preferred DPS class. This really shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone familiar with the post-Wrath RBG meta. Turns out, having a highly mobile class with tons of AoE damage is also really good in Wrath of the Lich King random battlegrounds. Starfall is an entirely different beast in Wrath of the Lich King, dealing some insanely high DPS over a very short period of time. When combined with AoE dots, Boomkins have some of the highest DPS in BG's. And again, thanks to their stealth and mobility, they are a jack of all trades, able to play multiple roles on any map, giving them a score of 4 on our rankings. 
For world PvP, we go back to the king of the jungle with Feral as the clear winner in open world environments. Once again, we're assuming that situations might evolve into 1v2 scenarios, which Feral Druids are actually equipped to handle thanks to predatory strikes. The ability to instant clone or root enemy players gives them far better control than their Boomkin counterparts when dealing with multiple attackers. We give Feral Druids a score of 4 in open world PvP. That brings us to Hunters. For the most part, all three specs do comparatively well in duels. Not the best, but still good enough to be a challenging matchup, even for some of the meta classes. BM is a bit more gimmicky and more or less auto wins into any caster thanks to Bestial Wrath. The combined CC immunity with high amounts of physical damage is able to truck through warlocks and mages quite easily. Other classes are not exactly free wins, especially if they have some way of simply avoiding Bestial Wrath damage with a defensive cooldown. Marksmanship is overall the better spec, especially against mage Melee, where they can simply max range most attacks and deny gap closers thanks to disengage. All in all though, we give Hunters a score of 3.5 for duels. As for BGs, the story is quite different. Here, Hunters are one of the most impactful classes. On FC maps, they can play a utility role, zoning off flag carriers into specific choke points to set up small ganks with rogues. Outside of this though, Hunters are just one of the more useful BG classes. Their high mobility combined with meaningful burst damage and a ranged MS effect gives them a deserved spot in any BG roster and we give them a score of 4.5. For world PvP, hunters are actually quite good and might fare slightly better than they do in duels. Being able to reliably kite multiple enemy players while also having cross CC potential makes them very well suited for the open world, especially where they aren't limited by the dueling range, which means they can simply kite until infinity and are really the only class that can do nearly all of its DPS rotation on the move. Here, hunters score a 4 out of 5. Moving on, we have Mage, which as you will find scores consistently high in all of our categories. Frost Mage does well into every melee with the exception of DK, and its worst matchups against ranged are probably Hunters and Shadow Priest. Everything else is fair game. One huge advantage Mage has in duels is the ability to constantly reset the fight if needed. A simple polymorph to drink combo is enough to turn losing matches around, and their multiple roots and blink stun make them super slippery against most of the melee cast. Altogether, we give them a score of 4 for duels. In BGs, mages can play a role similar to hunters, though arguably less effective as they aren't able to do much damage while moving. In any case, mages can play a very dynamic function on any map, whether it be controlling midfights with polymorphs or counterspell, or even playing a strict zoning role, blocking off enemy flag carriers just like hunters. Because of their flexibility, we give them a score of 4 for BGs. Finally, we have world PvP where again, mages can hold their ground. Remember that open world ganks sometimes involve unfair matchups against multiple players, but luckily the expansive control control kit of a mage makes this fairly manageable. One unique quirk of Frost Mage is that they get a free Nova with Shattered Barrier every time their shield breaks, and this Nova doesn't share DR with other freezing effects, making them super evasive in 1v1 combat. Pair that with the fact that mages aren't that reliable on CDs and usually have Cold Snap available when needed, and they are actually well suited for open world PvP, where we give them a hat trick score of 4. Next up we have Paladins, who are a bit too specialized to score high in dueling. There is one thing that a Ret Paladin needs in order to do well, uptime. That is because a lot of their self-healing is baked into Art of War procs, which grants them instant flash of light casts after melee critical strikes, and can even be bolstered with an additional talent called Sheath of Light. Because so much of their self-healing relies on being able to stay on target, this makes them naturally bad against any class that can zone, most notably Hunters, Mages, Shamans, and Warlocks. On the flip side, Ret does fairly fairly well into melee since they can be a bit more durable thanks to more self heals and are incredibly tanky when playing a one handed spec which you can learn about in our Ret Paladin starter course. In Battlegrounds, Holy Paladin becomes the preferred spec and represents one side of the Battleground healer trinity alongside Resto Druids and Disc Priests. Much of the tech that makes Holy Paladin good in arenas happens to translate perfectly to BGs, where Divine Sacrifice is one of the few AoE damage mitigation tools in the game, helping slow down teamfights with a single button. And of course, Paladins are one of the few classes with a magic to spell, and Holy just so happens to come equipped with one of the most broken tools in the game for bolstering their team's passive defense with Sacred Cleansing, which is massively frustrating to any caster DPS and prevents a lot of AoE pressure. 
World PvP is where Paladins have their weakest showing. Again, their biggest weakness is just needing to have uptime on enemy targets, which is never guaranteed in the expansive open world where some classes are able to kite for miles on end. Although Rep might be able to manage against some melee, its self-healing isn't powerful enough to deal with more than one attacker at a time. Because of this, we give Rhett a score of 2.5 in open world PvP. Next up, we have Priests. Although Disc can actually do well in 1v1s, we're gonna assume most people would prefer to duel as Shadow. Shadow is a bit of a wild card in duels and relies heavily on line of sight for success. That is because the class is built to weave in and out, dotting targets with instant casts, using CC when players connect, and then avoiding or healing enemy damage when needed. All of this becomes easier with a pillar. The main win condition for Shadow is live until the second Psychic Scream, using the first one to force out trinkets, and then stalling long enough to capitalize on a two-timer. But without a pillar, Shadow will struggle massively into the likes of Death Knights, Feral Druids, Hunters, and even Warriors, all of which have mechanics to avoid getting getting feared. For BGs, Disc becomes the preferred spec, as again, it is one of the best battleground healers. There are a few reasons for this, one being the strength of Prayer of Mending, which is easily one of the most mana efficient AoE heals. Secondly though, Priests have the strongest defensive dispel, being able to remove two magic effects at once with a single key press. This makes them really good at keeping their teammates free of debuffs, especially when utilizing the haste buff from Borrowed Time, which can have insanely high uptime with multiple shield targets. World PvP is definitely where Priests will struggle, as both specs will undoubtedly have mana issues in random open world skirmishes. Shadow in particular will have its own set of mana problems early expansion, which is one of its main limiting factors until later seasons, where PvE trinkets can help mitigate this issue. Until then, we are giving Priests a low score of 2 for world PvP. And now for everyone's favorite class, Rogue. We hate to break it to you, rogues just aren't that good in duels. I mean, they struggle super hard into Rhett Paladins because of Divine Purpose turning Hand of Freedom into a Stunbreaker, and of course, having a counter instantly makes rogues bad, right? No, we're totally kidding. Aside from DK, rogues are arguably the best dueling class. In fact, sub rogues are one of the few specs that can actually beat DK's 1v1 in early season 5. But that requires a bit of technical knowledge of both classes, which of course can be difficult to learn if you're new to Wrath. But luckily, this sort of knowledge is exactly what we teach in our courses, where you can learn how to master your damage, cooldowns, and learn all the interactions your spec has with other classes. And with our Knowing Your Enemy course, you learn how to counter any opponent in Wrath Classic, whether it be duel or arena. Visit the link below for an exclusive pre-launch offer. Anyway, back to rogues and what makes them broken. Shadow Dance damage is absolutely insane and puts enemy players in a checkmate situation automatically. If they trinket the Shadow Dance, a full blind reset is possible, where they will then have to deal with Cloak, Evasion, Sprint, and Vanish in order to win. And look, if you've played WoW in any capacity, you already know that rogues are the kings of battlegrounds. There is not a single class that can individually swing a game harder than a rogue, and that is all thanks to stealth. Of course, this comes with unrivaled burst, control, and lockdown, making rogues a nightmare for flag carriers carriers and base defenders alike. We confidently give Rogue a score of 5 in BGs. The story doesn't end there though, as rogues are also the best class in world PvP. Again, you probably already knew this, so we're gonna keep it brief. If you even manage to live through their shadow dance without a PvP trinket, you have to contend with seemingly infinite cooldowns, which can all be reset by the way, thanks to preparation. So yes, rogues score a 5 for world PvP as well. Moving on, we have a bit of a wild card, Shaman. For duels, Enhancement beats out Elemental. Even though Ellie might have a spot at the top of Arena tier list, it is just too slow to work effectively in highly explosive duels, which is why Enhancement is the premier dueling spec. A lot of this boils down to one cooldown, Wolves. If you weren't aware by now, Feral Spirit is one of the strongest cooldowns in the game, giving the Shaman massive damage, mobility, and self-healing for 45 seconds. These Wolves can be killed, but you would probably be dead before that even happens. Their matchup spread is pretty decent and their hardest 1v1s are against DKs and rogues, which really shouldn't come as a surprise. With favorable matchups into the rest of the cast, we give Enhance a score of 4 in dueling. BGs are a different story, and this is where Elemental really shines. Look, every Shaman spec is passively good in BGs thanks to Bloodlust and of course the infinite amount of unique utility that Totems are able to provide. Elemental just happens to have one of the best team-wide buffs thanks to Totem of Wrath, combined with some incredible AoE damage. Oh yeah, and they can knock people off cliffs, of course, so that's cool enough to give them a score of 4 out of 5. 
Open world PvP is where shamans really struggle. Both elemental and enhancement will find problems here. Again, elemental is just too slow to deal with highly volatile skirmishes. In reality, it really needs to sit there and ramp up its damage a bit while also needing to hard cast. This works in arena, but isn't that ideal for 1v2 ganks. Enhance, on the other hand, is fairly weak without wolves, and when they aren't available in the open world, enhance becomes a much weaker spec. Altogether though, shamans get a score of 2 for world PvP. Moving on, we have Warlocks, who are on a similar power level to mages in duels. One thing that may surprise you is that Destro Warlocks almost exclusively play with Succubus pets, who are able to quickly seduce targets out of stealth, allowing Warlocks to prep damage with Immolate. Most of their 1v1 kit is built around setting up damage with Fear or Seduce, and then unleashing it with Shadow Fury or Coil. For the most part, this works well into classes that have limited ways to manage these interactions, but like other casters on our list, this means losing matchups into DKs, Hunters, Rogues, and some sometimes enhancement shamans. Otherwise though, Destro Warlocks are well suited for 1v1s, giving them a score of 4 in the category. In BGs, Warlocks are also quite strong, though do suffer a bit in the defense department since they can be easily cleaved down in teamfights, but if that doesn't happen, both Destro and Affliction are really well suited for BGs. Just like other expansions, Unstable Affliction is one of the few forms of dispel protection which bolsters team damage when Disc Priests or Paladins are on the other side of the field. In any case, Warlocks are a true glass cannon inside BGs, and in the right hands get a score of 4 in this category. And just like mages, warlocks are actually pretty decent in world PvP. Unlike some of the other classes on this list, they aren't super reliant on long defensive or offensive cooldowns, and instead can do just fine as long as Shadow Fury or Coil is available. And of course, playing with a succubus translates to having more control in 1v2 skirmishes. So just like mage, they will be getting a score of 4 in world PvP. And now to the ultimate melee class of the expansion, warrior! Well, not quite. Their story is similar to Elemental Shaman. While Warriors might be one of the best overall melee for Arena, it doesn't really translate to duels. Their biggest obstacle is zoning. Classes like Hunters, Mages, Druids, and even DKs present a huge problem for Warriors since they can simply apply a slow and kite away. Of course, you might be saying, well, what about Bladestorm? Doesn't that destroy everything? While it certainly does deal a lot of damage, many defensive cooldowns can be efficiently traded to mitigate it entirely. Honestly, there really aren't that many winning matchups for Warriors in 1v1, and for these reasons, they score a measly 2 out of 5. Battlegrounds are a different story, however. Here, warriors are more free to do warrior things, assuming they have a pocket healer, of course. Remember how we said that DKs are one of the best melee classes in BGs? Well, warriors are up there too, and are a solid option for small node skirmishes, where their sustained damage can help snowball teamfights. Overall, warriors are relatively flexible in the BG format, which is why we're giving them a score of 4 out of 5. Unfortunately, their prowess in BGs doesn't carry over well to open world PvP, where their same dueling issues just get amplified. Just like some of the other melee classes on this list, warriors can simply get kited forever in the open world, and without much self-healing, this is a recipe for disaster. Overall, we give warriors a score of 2 in world PvP. If seeing warriors score so low surprises you, we should note that all this information came directly from some of the best Wrath players of all time. We've been working alongside these players to bring you an epic new website for Wrath of the Lich King that includes in-depth class guides and arena commentaries that are specifically designed to put you ahead of the competition and fast. A single subscription gets you access to Wrath Classic, Shadowlands, and eventually Dragonflight content, which is amazing value. Visit the link below for a discount offer. Anyway, we want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments below and tell us your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. We will be pumping out WoW PvP content weekly, so let us know what you would like to see next on our channel. Until then, see you soon.